Hello, my name is Brendan Raymond, um, and I am here to do a deck tech or deck breakdown of Yarok the Desecrated, which is the newest commander deck that I have built. Um, I got him from my LGS local game store because I've been hearing a lot about him and I was keen to have a go at building him. So that is what I've done. I'm going to show you what he looks like. So, Yarok the Desecrated is two, a black, a green, and a blue for a 3-5 legendary creature elemental horror. Um, he has Death Touch, he has Lifelink, and he says, if a permanent entering the battlefield, that is any permanent, so land, enchantment, artifact, creature, and it does not say permanent you control, it's just a permanent, so it can be ones that other people control as well. So if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent that you control to trigger, so that triggered ability could be on a land, it could be on an enchantment, could be on a creature, could be on an artifact, um, that ability triggers an additional time. So this can work a number of different ways. The simplest way is if you have a creature that has an enter the battlefield ability, that will trigger twice. Um, but say you have something like landfall, where um, you have something that triggers off lands entering the battlefield, then that now will trigger twice as well. So that's pretty great. So I will take you through what I've got in this deck. A lot of it has been built from stuff that I have at home, um, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, yeah, let's give this a go. So, I have in this deck one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight basic islands of various art types. I have one, two, three, four, five basic swamps. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 basic forests. So all up, that is 11 plus 8 plus 5, 24 basics that I have. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 non-basics, so that's 35 lands. I do have a decent number of things that can search up lands in this deck. So I'll take you quickly through the non-basics. I have Golgari Guildgate, nice and simple. It's a gate, it ends the battlefield tapped, it taps for black or green. Does what it says on the can, nice and easy. Ether Hub, a little bit spicy. Um, when it enters the battlefield, you get an energy. So I have a few um, energy themes in this deck. I have a small energy package, I guess you could say. Um, sub theme um, so this one and I've also got a few lands that haven't entered the battlefield ability just for some that little extra nominal value um, so this one also taps for colorless or you can tap and pay an energy to add one mana of any color to your mana pool so this can potentially be uh, in any color land a five color land if you do have the energy for it we have here Temple of Deceit. It enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, you scry one. So with Yark out, that's a, not a scry two, but a scry one and then scry one again. So scry two, you took look at the top two, where scry one and then scry one. If you leave the first one on the top, then you're just looking at that one again. Um, so it's not quite as good as scry two, but it is still good. Um, and then it taps to add a blue or a black to your mana pool. Dismal Backwater. This is, again, we enter the battlefield tapped, it taps a blue or black, and this one, when it enters the battlefield, I gain one life, or two, if I have Yarakan. Just that incidental value, and we're getting lots and lots of value from Yarok. That's the name of the game here. Um, Evolving Wilds, classic. You tap it, you sacrifice it, you search library for a basic land card, and put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Um, with the abilities that searched for lands, I was really... <laughs> Um, prioritizing ones that put them onto the battlefield. So I was triggering those abilities um, that cared about lands entering the battlefield, such as Landfall. Um, 
rather than ones that put them into my hand so that I could have the possibility of multiple lands entering the battlefield on the same turn or even having lands into the battlefield on other people's turns as well and just the potential um, synergies and value there. Um, Demir Guildgate, again, simple. It's a gate, enter the battlefield tapped, taps for blue or black. Fertile Thicket, just really nice land here. Enter the battlefield tapped, you tap it for green, but when it enters the battlefield, you may look at the top five cards, five cards of your library. If you do reveal up to one basic land card from among them, then put that card on top of your library and the rest on the bottom in any order. <coughs> so this is just really nice. Um, so you get to set up your next draw um, if you're running low on lands which is really nice and it is a may ability so if you're doing fine for lands you can choose not to do this ability um, and if you really need the lands then you can um, potentially set up to oh uh, though with how it's worded actually no no you wouldn't be able to set up to you because you put the rest on the bottom so um, that one doesn't work quite as well in terms of doubling that into the battlefield ability. Um, though if you fail to find on the first one, it means that you have more chance of finding on the second one. Um, Thornwood Falls. Yeah, this is the one where enter the battlefield tapped and you gain one life. And this one taps for green or blue. Kelney Garden. Oh, this one's nice. Um, it just gives you a zero on green plant when it enters and taps for green. So this is lovely in your opening hand. You just get... A zero one plant, just a little defender to um, stave off any early attackers, any aggro players. It's just nice. Um, Simic Guildgate taps for green or blue. It's a gate. It's good stuff. And Jungle Hollow and Spell Level Tapped gives you one life. Taps for black or green. Okay, so that is our lands. Let us now go on to the non lands. <laughs> we have a lot of stuff here. So let's. Let's shuffle it up. I'm not doing this in any particular order. Um, let's see what we get. There's a lot of fun stuff in here. And again, it's all about that value. So starting off, Riftwing Cloudskate. So this is an interesting one. So we have three blue blue for a 2-2 two -two illusion. So paying five mana for a 2-2, two -two, so it's got to, got to do something pretty decent. Has flying, it's still a lot for a 2-2 two -two flyer. When it enters the battlefield, return target permanent to its owner's hand. So it's gonna bounce something. Uh, it can bounce something of ours if we wanna re-trigger an ability, or it can bounce something of somebody else's as well. And remember, if you do have Yark out, you do get to return two things, and they could be from two different players as well. Um, it also has that nice alternate cost there. It has suspend three for one in a blue. So you can, if you get this one nice and early, you can pay it for one in a blue and then you've got three turns to try and get your account as well, um, which is a nice alternate way of using him. So that's really nice. Thriving Rhino, he's one of the ones in our energy package. So he's two and a green for a 2-3. And when he enters the battlefield, you get two energy. Obviously, if you've got Yarok out, that's going to be four energy. Um, and whenever he attacks, you may pay two energy if you do put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Um, we do also have a mini plus one, plus one counters theme in the deck as well. We have a few synergies there. So this guy can get big and he's just um, getting some good synergy happening. Seagate Oracle is quite nice. Two and a blue for a 1-3 human wizard. When he enters the battlefield, you look at the top two cards of your library. You put one of them into your hand and the other on the bottom. How would you like three mana, draw two cards, give yourself a 1-3? I like that very much. Thank you. Um, yeah, just, just a lot of value here. And, and the thing with any of these cards is... I want them to still be decent, even if I don't have Yara count. So I'm still getting value. Obviously, it's not going to be as much, but it's still pretty decent. Aether Adept, one blue blue for a 2-2 two -two human wizard. When he enters the battlefield, return target creature to its owner's hand. Again, we've got that bounce. So 
This one's cheaper than Rift Ring Cloud Skate unless you're paying the suspend cost. And it's just simple, it's 2 2, bounce something, nice and easy. Um, so we don't have. We don't have heaps of direct removal in this deck in terms of board wipes or destroy target creature, but we do have a fair bit of bounce. So getting that, getting those tempo plays is really nice here. Oh. Got to be careful there. Oh. Okay. There we go. Let's just shuffle that. Okay. Next up, Raised by Wolves. So I found this one and I was like, oh, this, this can work really nicely. So it, it's a bit expensive. So three green green for an aura, which sounds like a lot for an aura, and it is. Um, so enchant creature, when it enters the battlefield, put two 2-2 two, two green wolf creature tokens onto the battlefield. So five mana for two two twos. It doesn't sound great. But then enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each wolf you control. So usually... This would be make two two twos, and then the creature that you can you put this on gets plus two plus two. Now, if you manage to have Yark out while you've got this, instead you're making four two twos, and your creature is getting plus four plus four. That sounds really nice to me. Um, so ideally, you don't want to be casting this if you don't have Yark out because it is a little bit expensive. Um, but if you can manage to cast it while he is out, it is really nice and gets you some, um, there's some great go wide stuff that you can get, get happening in this deck, which is just really lovely. So you get go wide and go tall at the same time with that card. Omen Speaker, just a really nice one. Um, one in a blue, human wizard, one three, when it enters the battlefield, scry two. Nice and simple, just scry two, then scry two again. Seems Dece, thank you very much. I will do that. Mist Raven, again with that bounce. So two blue blue for a two two flyer. When it ATBs, return target creature to its owner's hand. So we're using this as our removal, but we're also using it to potentially bounce stuff to our own hand and reuse those enter the battlefield abilities. So that was one of the abilities that I was really... Um, valuing um, and really prioritizing here. Now this one is really an all-star in this deck. Stone Cedar Hierophant. It's a bit expensive. Um, and this one is shiny. Two green green for a human druid. It is a 1-1. One, one. And it says, whenever a land comes into play under your control, untap Stone Cedar Hierophant. And then you can also tap her to untap target land. So this is where you get some really interesting interactions. So if you have Yarok out and you have Stone Cedar Hierophant out, and assuming that she isn't summoning sick, um, which which is a little bit to get set up, but it can happen. Um, so a land comes into play, and now you've got two triggers because of Yarok. So so say you've you've already had her tapped. So the land comes into play and you've got two triggers. So you let the first one resolve and you untap her. Then you tap her to untap a land. And then you let the second trigger resolve and you untap her. And then you tap her to tap, untap another land. So each time a land comes in, you're able to untap two lands, which um, depending on what lands you have could be tapping for more than one mana. Now the lands I showed you all tapped for only one mana, but I do have some auras that enchant lands to be able to tap them for more than one mana. Um, Undergrowth Champion. He really is just a, a champ, just honestly. One green green for a 2-2 two, two elemental creature. Um, if damage would be dealt to him while he has a plus one plus one counter on him, you prevent that damage and instead remove a plus one plus one counter from him. And it's regardless of how much damage, so it's not if he's dealt three damage, you take off three plus one plus one counters. No, it's each time he's dealt damage, you just take off one plus one plus one counter. Um, yeah, um, I I might have to look up how that interacts with Death Touch and Life Link, but I'm from memory, I'm pretty sure that that prevents both of those abilities. But I might be wrong there. Anyway, 
because because it specifically says that it prevents that damage. Um, but then it also has another ability. It has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you put a plus one plus one counter on him. So whenever a land enters the battlefield, if you've got Yarok out, you're getting two plus one plus one counters on him. He becomes a four four. He becomes a six six. He becomes an eight eight. He gets pretty big, pretty quick, and he's difficult to remove because of that first ability, which is just really nice. Um, now, there is another version of this card which just had the second ability and not the first, um, which costs one green man mana less and is a 1-1 one -one instead of a 2-2, two -two, which is Vine Lash at Kudzu. Um, but I ended up taking him out because it was essentially the same as him. Um, so that's also a good one that you could look at and is a decent card by itself. Um, Glass Blower's Puzzle Lot. Two mana artifact, two generic mana. When it enters the battlefield, scry two, then you get two energy counters. Then you can pay two and a blue and sacrifice it to do the same again, scry two, and then get two energy counters. So when this ETBs, if you've got Yark out, you scry two, then get two energy counters, and then you scry two again, and then get two more energy counters, which is lovely. Um, and then being able to do it at some other time, um, just having this out at any time to be able to do that is really nice. Um, so some great value there. Um, so I do have this one meld card. Um, well, one meld card. Obviously, the two cards meld together. So this is one half of it. So Midnight Scavengers, four and a black for a 3-3 three, three human rogue creature. And when it enters the battlefield, so this is the one that has the enter battlefield ability, Graf Rats does not, um, you may return target creature card with converted mana cost, three or less, from your graveyard to your hand. So if Yarok is out, which he probably will be because this is a 5 CMC one, um, then you're returning two creatures with CMC three or less, assuming that you have two in there, um, to your hand, which is really nice. Um, and he also melds with graph rats. Um, so I'll just put him off to the side here um, to, for when graph rats does come around so that you can see how that works. Um, Humbler of Mortals. Now this one is a constellation trigger, which again is an enter the battlefield trigger. Um, it's really nice. So this is four green green for a five five enchantment creature elemental. As Constellation, it says whenever he, because he is an enchantment, uh, sorry, I, I keep calling these cards he's, uh, whenever Humder of Mortals or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control gain trample until end of turn. Um, now, I don't have heaps and heaps of enchantments in here, but I do have enough that this can be really nice. Now, obviously, double trample isn't really going to be doing anything. Um, but just having that ability of giving the whole team trample, particularly if I'm going wide, um, is really nice. So this is a decent include in the deck that I find really helpful at times. Now this is one of those land enchantments that I was talking about before. Weirding Wood. Two and a green for an enchantment or enchant land when it enters the battlefield, investigate. So when you investigate, you're making a clue token, which basically says you pay two, you sacrifice the artifact, and you draw a card. So that's just some incidental value that you've got happening. And obviously, if you've got Yarok out, you're making two clues. Um, but the Enchanted Land has um, this additional ability of tap, add two mana of any one color to your mana pool, um, which is really nice. So particularly if you've got that Stone Cedar Hierophant out and you're able to untap that land, that's getting you that additional mana, which is really nice. Now, I do not have many instants and sorceries in this deck because Yarok is really caring about permanents entering the battlefield and obviously instants and sorceries are not permanents. But I do have a few, a couple, um, that I think can be helpful. So this one is one that I've included. Supernatural Stamina, one black mana for an instant. So it's really flexible in that way. Um, and until, it says until end of turn, Tug creature gets plus two plus O oh and gains when this creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. 
So really what I'm wanting to use this for is if I know that a creature that I have is going to die and it has a useful enters the battlefield ability, then I can use this to bring it back and re-trigger that ability. Um, and it means that my creature doesn't die. That plus two plus oh means that their creature that, that, is, um, that it is blocking or that is blocking it could very well die. Um, so just some nice utility there. Obviously, it's a very specific situation, so I might find after some more playing that I'm not really using it that much, but we'll see how we go. Acolyte of Affliction. Now, this is one from uh, the most recent set, Theros, uh, Beyond Death, um, which I've heard very mixed reviews about, um, but this one works fairly well here. So two and a black and a green for a human cleric. It is a 2-3, and when it ends the battlefield, you put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, so your mill two, and then you may return a permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Um, and that's really lovely that it's permanent, not just a creature, not just a land, but a permanent. So it could be anything, and the chances of you, particularly in this deck, of me getting a permanent in the top two cards is really, really high. So almost always I am going to be returning a card to my hand, which is lovely. And if you've got Yarok out, and instead of just getting one card back, you're getting two cards back, that's really awesome. Um, so just some great value there. Now, Realm Right, this is one of the ones that I picked up for specifically for the deck, because I saw it and was like, oh, that is awesome. So, one blue mana for a 1-1 one, one Vidalcan Wizard. Just one mana. This is awesome. As that enters the battlefield, you choose a basic land type. So, that's going to be, in this deck, either Swamp or Island or Forest. But, obviously, you could also choose mountain or plains or even wastes I guess you could choose um, but then it says lands you control are the chosen type in addition to their other types now if you happen to have Yarok out you are choosing two types as you enter the battlefield not just one now I happen to know that I mainly have forests in my deck. I have more forests in my deck than I do have swamps or islands. So chances are, I play this, I name swamp and island, and now all of my forests are also swamps and islands. All of my swamps are also islands, and all of my islands are also swamps. Um, and there's a couple of different ways that, that you could play it depending on what you have in hand and stuff like that. Um, and even if you can only just name one of them, it's going to be super helpful. So this is a really nice one to fix the mana, make sure that you've got what you need, when you need it. Really nice. Um, this is another one that I picked up, Dire Undercurrents. This is a really nice one. So three Demir Demir, that hybrid mana, for an enchantment. And it says, whenever a blue creature comes into play, so it enters the battlefield under your control, you may have target player draw a card. It then also says, whenever a black creature comes into play, enters the battlefield, under your control, you may have target player discard a card. And again, if you have Yarok out, this is two, you're doubling this. So each time you play a creature, if it's a blue creature, someone is, you're getting two people to draw a card, or you are drawing a card twice, more than likely. Um, but you can potentially use this as a political tool, as a reward for someone. Say, okay, if you don't attack me, then I will let you draw a card off Dire Undercurrents um, next time I play a blue creature. Now, they may not know that you have no blue creatures in hand, and that may take a while to happen, for instance. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting seeing how you can use this. And again, with a black creature, you can get two different people to discard a card or one person to discard two cards, um, depending on the threat assessment at the time. But this is just really nice, can stack up really quickly. Um, I will note that blue and black I have less of than I do green, so it's not going to be every turn that I'm triggering that, but um, I'm still going to be triggering it often enough that I think it's going to be making some great value. Avenger of Zendikar. This is an absolute classic. 
and it is monstrous in this deck. It's just going to be an absolute finisher if it's not answered ASAP. Five green green, so it's a lot of mana. This is an endgame card for a 5-5 five, five creature elemental. When it enters the battlefield, put a 0-1 green plant creature token onto the battlefield for each land you control. Seeing as you've just tapped seven mana, you're going to be probably putting out at least seven plants. Um, which is awesome in itself. Um, and if you happen to have Yarok out, well, hey, you get double that many plants. That's fine, right? That's fine. Um, and then Landfall, whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you put in, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on each plant creature you control. And again, that is doubled, so you are putting two plus one plus one counters on each plant creature you control. So the ideal play here for Avenger of Zendikar is you want to be playing Avenger, then playing your land for turn. And particularly if you've got, say, a fetch land on board, like Evolving Wilds, like I had before, cracking that, getting another one out. So you've got four plus one plus one counters going on all your plants. Um, now, obviously, they are going to be summoning sick, so you're not going to be able to attack with them, but you sure are going to be able to defend with them, um, and no one's going to be able to get through that very easily, um, unless they've got a board wipe. But hey, then that means they've used a board wipe, you've gotten that out of their hand. Um, this is a card that has to be answered in this deck, otherwise it will go crazy and it will stomp everyone. Shamanic Revelation. Card draw in green. What is this? Yet, yeah, it's kind of crazy how much card draw green actually has when it's tied to creatures. So, three green green for a sorcery. It is expensive. It says, draw a card for each creature you control. Um, and then it has the ferocious keyword there. Um, you gain four life for each creature you control with power for or greater. So, ideally... For three green green, so five mana, I want to be drawing at least three cards with this. So I want to have at least three creatures out on the battlefield, ideally more if possible, um, before I use this card. And then gaining the life with power for creatures you have controlled power four or greater. As you've seen, I've got some plus one plus one counter synergies, so it's quite possible that I'm going to have a few creatures that do have that higher power. Um, but yeah, so this can this can draw you a lot of cards when you use it at the right time. Um, or it can be really nasty if you draw it just after a board wipe and you're like, I've only got one creature on the board. I really don't want to be spending five mana to draw one card and not gaining any life. Um, so it's, it is a bit um, situational, um, but it's good enough in the... In the right situation and it's often enough that you're going to be in the right situation that I think it's worth the include. Now I do have in this deck fabrication module. Um, I do not have all three pieces of the combo. I have two of them in here. Um, I don't have the third piece because I don't have it um, but I'm also not a combo player so that's not what I'm interested in. I'm more interested in Synergy then combo. Um, so fabrication module is three mana for an artifact and whenever you get one or more energy counters You put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control So again, I said I had a little energy sub theme here and you can pay four mana and tap to get an energy counter You really never want to be using that ability quite honestly um, and chances are if you get this at the wrong time it's just going to sit around and not really do that much. Um, that is a mana sink if you if you do need it, um, but hopefully you don't. Um, but essentially it's four mana tap, put a plus one plus one counter on something, which is okay. Um, really, you don't want to be putting that much mana into that, um, but you can if you need to. But it's really a lot better when you have some of the other energy pieces out that are giving you energy. Now... I do have one or two things like this. Illusionist Stratagem. Three in a blue for an instant. 
basically blink two things. Exile up to two target creatures you control, then return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. So it's an immediate blink of two creatures that you control, and then you draw a card. Um, now, I will note that this sort of ability does not work well with the plus one, plus one counters. So you do need to be a little bit careful about when you use it. Um, but re-triggering those enter the battlefield abilities when you've got Yarok out, being able to do two of them at once, and then it's also having draw a card on it so it just replaces itself is really lovely. Um, so this can be some really nice value for you if you don't have a creature to play in your hand. This is essentially the equivalent of you playing two creatures again, which is really nice. Um, now, you've probably heard a lot about Vidalk and Orrery before, particularly if you watch um, the Command Zone, but have you heard of its cousin, Girapu Orrery? <laughs> um, probably the Orrery that I like a lot more. So this is a four mana artifact um, that has a, a couple of different abilities here, and this is what you'd see in a lot of group hug decks. It says each player may play an additional land on each of his or her turns. And then it says at the beginning of each player's upkeep, if that player has no cards in hand, that player draws three cards. So the main thing that I'm interested in there is that first ability, being able to get eight additional lands into play so I can trigger those landfall abilities again um, if I'm able to, if I do have those lands in hand, is really nice. And then also, if I'm emptying my hand, um, being able to draw back up um, at the beginning of my next turn is really awesome, being able to regenerate that gas. Now, this is a symmetrical effect. It will um, affect your opponents as well. So you do need to keep that in mind in terms of when you play it and perhaps be looking at when you need to remove this piece um, if it is benefiting your opponents more than you um, but it's just a card that I do really like um, and I thought it would be a great fit in this deck. Here's another constellation creature, Thor Render Lamia. This is a bit of a nasty one. So four black black for an enchantment creature Lamia, she's a 5-3. And she has Constellation, whenever her or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent discards a card. So this isn't target player, this is each opponent. Um, and if you've got Yarok out, it's going to be each opponent discards two cards, which is really nasty. Um, and it can just add up very quickly if you do have a few enchantments. Um, so denying your opponent's resources is just really powerful and can give you a lot of value really quickly but at the same time people will not like it they will remove this as soon as they can um, because otherwise they just won't be able to play um, and people like being able to play funnily enough um, but yeah just keep that in mind um, omen of the hunt this is another one from the newer set um, two and a green for an enchantment with flash um, when it enters the battlefield, I love that it has flash. You can just do it on your opponent's turn. When it enters the battlefield, you go search your library for a basic land card. You put it onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle your library. So obviously if you've got Yarok out, you're going and searching for two basic land cards and putting them onto the battlefield tapped. Um, the fact that they come on tapped isn't that big of an issue because often you're playing this on your opponent's turn. Um, but being able to get those landfall triggers if you do have them or the, the lands and the battlefield abilities themselves if they've got the scry one or the gain one life or the gain one energy is really nice. Um, and then you can just pay two and a green and sack this to scry two at any time which is really lovely. So some great value there and getting you the lands that you need. Now I couldn't do Yarok without Mole Drifter. I mean, you, you really can't. Um, if you don't know Mole Drifter, do you even do Commander? Um, Mole Drifter, when it has flying, when it comes into play, draw two cards. It costs four and a blue. It is a 2-2, two, two, but hey, it has an evoke cost. Four, two, and a blue. How would you like to pay three mana and draw four cards? I like that idea. Um, 
So this is a really flexible card. So you can pay three mana if you've got Yark out and draw four. And that just feels so good. It just feels so good. Or you can pay five if you need the body. Um, you can still draw four, which is amazing. And you've got this 2-2 flyer hanging around as an attacker, as a blocker. If you've, you're running up against flyers, um, just a really great flexible card. Even if you don't have Yarok out, some great value. But if you do, it's just amazing. Um, Merle Drifter, just so good. Um, so one of the things that I looked at when I was making this deck is, are there ways that I can get lands into play on my opponent's turn? And there's not many ways, but there are some janky ways. And this is one of them. Walking Atlas. Two mana artifact construct. He is a 1-1. One -one, and he can tap to put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Now... The chances are that most of the time I'm not going to be using this, but when I'm able to, this is just going to be funny. Honestly, it's a bit of jank. It's a bit of fun. Yeah, it's a bit of additional value when you can get it, and you'll be glad when you are able to use it. Um, but yeah, it, it, it is a bit janky, I will admit. Now, I do have a Planeswalker in this deck, a singular Planeswalker. I could probably put more in, but I've just put in the one. He is shiny um obnixilis reignited now the main reason i have this guy here is for his minus ability destroy target creature um now obnixilis reignited is three black black for a five mana planeswalker um here's three abilities plus one you draw a card and you lose one life so you know he can draw you a card awesome cool Minus three, destroy target creature. So this is probably the most unconditional removal that I've got in the deck. It is five mana for that removal. So it is a bit expensive, but if you need it, it is there. Um, and then you've got a minus eight. So you're going to have to tick him up three times before you're going to be able to use it. Um, but then it says target opponent. Target opponent gets an emblem. So you don't get the emblem, an opponent gets the emblem. With whenever a player draws a card, you lose to life. And that that can just be game ending right there. Um, because obviously there's nothing that they can do to get rid of that emblem. There's nothing they can do to interact with that emblem. And in this deck, you are drawing a fair number of cards. Um, because of all those into this battle for the abilities that are drawing you cards. Um, but yeah, this is mainly here for removal. But those other abilities are really great and helpful too as well if he does stick around and you are able to protect him. Um, here we are. Here's the other half of our um, meld creature, Graph Rats. One and a black for a 2-1 creature rat. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you both own and control Graph Rats and a creature named Midnight Scavengers, you exile them and then meld them into Chittering Host. So I will show you what that looks like. So here we have Graph Rats, here we have Midnight Scavengers, and obviously um, if you didn't realize Midnight Scavengers, the way it's worded is it can get back Graph Rats. So usually you want to try and get Graph Rats first and then Midnight Scavengers afterwards. Um, but then what happens is you take them out and you turn them around and you get Chittering Host. Um, which is really nice. So he also has an enter the battlefield ability. <laughs> he has haste, he has menace, he is an Eldrazi horror, he is a 5-6. Um, and it says when Chittering Host enters the battlefield, other creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0, and gain menace until end of turn. So if you do have Yarok out, that is going to be plus 2, plus 0. Obviously double menace isn't anything in particular, um, but that is really nice. Generally speaking, I will admit I am not an Eldrazi fan, but I thought this was a really nice include in the deck. Um, that would work quite well. And just some little jank, just some fun. I'm, I am, I am, I do like the flavorful plays. So I thought that was a nice flavorful play. Um, 
Here's another constellation one. Three blue blue white water naiads for a 4-4 enchantment creature nymph. She has constellation and whenever she or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control tug, creature can't be blocked this turn. So if you've got Yarok out, this is two creatures that can't be blocked, which adds up super duper quickly. Um, so five mana, two creatures can't be blocked, seems really nice and being able to do that on a number of turns is really, really awesome and can end games pretty quickly. Okay, now this is another fairly new addition, but using an ability that I started off with fairly early. So this is another shiny one, Fathom Mage. It's two and a green and a blue for a 1-1 one, one human wizard. Four mana for a 1-1. One, one. Okay, but it has Evolve. Now, the text on Evolve is very specific. So it says, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if that creature has greater power or toughness than this creature, put a plus one, plus one counter on this tree creature. So that is an enters the battlefield trigger. So if you have Fathom Mage out and another creature enters the battlefield, this goes, hey, a creature has entered the battlefield. Is its power or toughness greater than this? This is a 1-1. One, one. So the first time, chances are, yes, it will be, unless it's a 1-1 one, one as well. Now, y Yarrick is going to see that and double that trigger. So you're going to have two plus one, plus one counters put on here. Now, that does mean that it's going to take longer until the next one happens. But then when it does, you're going to get two plus one, plus one counters again. And then it says, whenever a plus one, plus one counter is placed on Fathom Mage, you may draw a card. And because that is, two, because Yara does double the triggers, um, there is two separate triggers that are on the stack. So it's one instance of a plus one, plus one counter being placed, another instance of a plus one, plus one counter being placed. Mm -hmm. So each time you get that evolved trigger happening twice, you will be drawing two cards, putting two plus one, plus one counters on her. This is a really great card if you can get that trigger happening often. Um, and it just adds up some really awesome value. Um, there were a lot of other Evolve cards that I started off with in the deck because of that really nice ability um, of adding those plus one, plus one counters. But I ended up removing a lot of them because there were essentially vanilla Evolve creatures. Um, Gift of Paradise. Um, is two and a green for an enchant land, enchantment aura. When it enters the battlefield, you gain three life. If you've got Yarok out, that's six life, which is nice. Um, and enchanted land has tap, add two mana of any one color to your mana pool. So again, this is something that can ramp you, give you that extra mana. It's really nice. And giving you that extra life, it's just that little buffer is handy as well. Gate Creeper Vine, one and a green for an O2 plant. It's a defender. There you go. Um, and when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card or a gate card. So you can grab one of your gates with one of this. I've got all three in the colors. Um, you reveal it, you put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. So this is one of the ones that puts it into your hand rather than onto the battlefield, which is a little bit annoying. So if you can play this before your land drop for turn, that will mean that whatever land you go get, you are then able to play, which is nice um, if you can do that. Now, Karametra's Acolyte. This really should be in a lot more green decks. Three in a green for a 1-4 human druid. Um, and she taps to add an amount of green to your mana pool equal to your devotion to green. So, reminder that um, your devotion to green is equal to the number of mana symbols in permanence you control, um, green mana symbols in permanence that you control. Um, so in the, in the converted mana, in the mana cost, sorry, of permanence you control. So if you've just got her out on the battlefield, then your devotion to green is going to be one, and she's going to be tapping for one green. But it's quite easy for it to be a lot more than that, for her to be tapping for two, three, four, five, six, and more. Um, so she is just a really nice mana rock, basically. Um, yeah, she she does a lot of work. Now this one originally started in my first deck, because my first deck that I built, which was Titania, um, originally started with an energy package as well, and then I ended up taking a lot of it out. 
Um, but this was a finisher in when I did have the energy package, and it's a finisher here as well. Ether Wind Basker, four green, green, green. For a lizard, it's a 7-7, seven, seven. it has trample. And when it enters the battlefield or attacks, you get en one energy for each creature you control. So if, you go if you've gone wide, which you can easily do with this deck, you're getting a lot of energy when this comes in, you're getting a lot of energy when this attacks. Where's that energy going? Well, you pay one energy, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. This is the shade ability, but in green and with energy, which is really, really interesting. Um, so if you've got lots of energy, you can just pump him up, make him massive, go tall, smash through whatever people have because he's got the trample. This, this can very quickly end games if it's not answered. Yeah, it's he's a big boy. He's coming through. He's coming to play. And he's just really pretty. Really pretty art. He's a lizard. It's nice. It's cute. I love it. I really love it. Crested Herge Cooler. Oh, we've got one from Ixalan in here. We've got a dinosaur here. Yes. Yeah. Three green green for a 3-3 three, three dinosaur with trample. Loving the trample. When he enters the battlefield, you make another 3-3 three, three with trample. So usually... You're paying five mana for two three threes with trample, which is decent, decent. Um, but if you got Yarok out, you're paying five mana for three three threes with trample, trample, which is even better. Loving that go wide, loving the value is really nice. Um, and if you can blink it, get more three threes. Yes, please. More trampley dinosaurs. I love it. Now this is another one that I originally had in that first deck that has transitioned over to this one. Deadlock Trap, three mana for an artifact. It enters the battlefield tapped, so you can't use it straight away. But when it does enter the battlefield, you get two energy, so that's gonna be four if you've got Yarok out. And then you can tap it, pay an energy, and then you tap target creature or planeswalker, and its activated abilities can't be activated this turn. So this can turn off a lot of stuff, and particularly, it can turn off a lot of commanders. And you can be doing this every turn and just denying people the ability to be able to use their most important piece if that piece is a creature or a planeswalker. You can just be denying them that every single turn. Um, and obviously you need some good threat assessment with this. Um, this can also be a really great political tool for going, okay, I lock this down so you can go in for the attack. Or if, you know, if I don't lock this down, what are you going to do for me? And all this sort of stuff. It's a really great thing that you can play around with. Okay, Free Scale Tusker. I know this is one that made a lot of people annoyed when it came out. Five mana, three green green for a 5-5 five, five beast. And when it enters the battlefield, put plus one, plus one counter on each other creature you control. Obviously, if you have no other creatures out, this does nothing. But if you do, this is massive. This is massive. This is going to be putting plus one, plus one counter on everything. If you've got Yarok out, putting two plus one, plus one counters on everything. It's just making everything big. It's really nice. Um, Rich Scale Tusker, doing work. Love it. Nice and simple, but great. How would you like to pay two mana and draw two cards? How would you like to pay two mana and even draw three cards? Well, here you go. Fate foretold. One and a blue for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Obviously, if you've got Yarok out, that's draw two cards. And when Enchanted Creature dies, its controller draws a card. So, obviously, you're wanting to put this on your own creature. So, when it goes in, you get two cards. When that creature dies, you get another card. It's really nice. Um, if you've got one of your Constellation things out, it's going to be triggering that Constellation. It's just some nice value, giving you some more cards. Really good. Now, this is one of the other Evolve ones that I did keep in the deck. Renegade Crisis. One green green for a 3-2 Beast Mutant. It has Evolve. And then it says, whenever it evolves, 
put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. Now again, if you've got nothing with plus one plus one counters on it, this isn't going to be doing as much as you'd like. It's still going to be getting bigger when you're playing your other creatures and this is recognized that those are bigger and this will be growing um, and this will be getting the two plus one plus one counters as the other one was. Um, and again, each one of those is an evolved trigger. So if you do get the one trigger, then you will be getting two triggers, which means you're going to be putting two plus one plus one counters on each other thing that has a plus one plus one counter on it. And because this deck does have a few plus one plus one counter synergies, as you've been seeing and as you'll see more of, this can get pretty crazy pretty quickly. Okay, we do have a Hydra. A Hydra is in the deck. Four green green for a 5-5 five, five Hydra. It's Oren Reef Hydra. It is crazy. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on him. So it's going to be two plus one plus one counters if you've got Yara count. And then it says if that land is a forest, put two plus one plus one counters on him instead. Which means it's going to be four plus one plus one counters. This guy just gets so big, so quickly, so trampley. He's a big boy. Again, he's one that's going to be need to be answered. Or he's just going to wreck people's days. This is another janky one that, that I've kept in. It probably shouldn't be in the deck. It doesn't have any particular synergy with anything else. But... I've kept it in here just for funsies. Sky Games, one in the blue. It's an enchantment aura. It enchants a land. And it says enchant land has tap target creature gains flying until end of turn. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. So you do need to remember that last sentence and remember to activate this in your main phase, which is really contrary to how we activate a lot of abilities, but you do need to remember that. Um, but this can just be really great at getting stuff through when people do have a lot of stuff on the ground and you don't have that trample or the trample just isn't quite enough. It just gives something flying. You get, put it on your biggest thing and it's just going to wreck people's day. It's just going to be amazing. Um, and it can break deadlocks really nicely. Um, burgeoning, really simple, one green mana for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent plays land, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. It's a nice early play. It can get a couple of extra lands out. Honestly, it's only probably going to be um, one or two or three extra lands most of the time because most of the time you're probably going, still just going to be playing one land per turn. But for those extra few lands, it is handy. Um, getting those extra landfall abilities and all that sort of thing so our next one trial of knowledge we've got some stuff here from amon cat three in a blue for an enchantment when it enters the battlefield draw three cards then discard a card so if you've got yarok out let's draw three cards discard a card then do it again draw three cards discard a card so you're drawing six and discarding two for four mana which is really nice um, and then it says when a cartouche enters the battlefield under your control, return it to its owner's hand. So one of the cycles that they did in Almonquette was these Aura Cartouches. I do have one of them in the deck, but 99% of the time that's not going to happen and you're really only thinking about that first part of the of the card. But if you can manage to bounce this, this back to your hand and do it again, it's pretty great. Um, yeah. Drawing six cards seems to ease. Spore Mound. Three green green for a 3-3 three, three fungus. Loving that fungus. Um, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token onto the battlefield. This is a token maker. It just churns out tokens. And if you've got Yark out, it's going to churn them out double as fast. Two 1-1s one, every time I play a land. Yes, please. This guy is great if he stays out for even just a couple of turns. Just that value is really nice. Um, getting those extra blockers out is lovely. Um, and those 1-1s one can easily get bigger with some of the plus one plus one counter synergies we've been seeing. 
Um, so this is one of the few removal pieces that we've got in the deck. So one black mana, fourth bridge prowler. It's a 1-1. One, one. It's a human rogue. And when it enters the battlefield, you may have target the creature, get minus one, minus one until end of turn. So that might not seem like, seem like much, but there are so many 1-1 one, one creatures that have um, these crazy abilities. We've seen a few in this deck that you can get rid of with this. Um, and if you do have Yara account, then suddenly you can also get rid of a 2-2, two -two, not just 1-1, one -one, or an X-2. Um, so this can get rid of X-1s, this can get rid of X-2s, or it can get rid of two X-1s if you've got Yara account and you've got those two targets. So um, this is actually a little bit more flexible than you might think it is um, and can just get rid of those couple of things that are being annoying. Um, just some nice spot removal for the deck. Next one we've got here is Mycosynth Wellspring. It's a two mana artifact. And when it enters the battlefield or is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. So if you've got Yark out, this is pay two mana, go and get two lands, put them in your hand. And then when it dies, you get another one. Um, now it doesn't have an ability on itself to for it to go to the graveyard, so that would have to happen from a board wipe or something along those lines, um, which do happen, of course, in commander games relatively frequently, depending on the sort of groups that you are in. Um, so again, this is going to your hand rather than straight onto the battlefield with those lands. So it's not quite as good as some of the others, but it's still really nice being able to get two basic lands from your deck for just two mana, and then perhaps another one later as well. Prey Upon. Um, this is some more direct removal as well. So one green mana for a sorcery, target creature you control, fights target creature you don't control. Nice and simple. Um, often you're going to have some really big stuff when out on the battlefield, particularly with those plus one, plus one counter synergies. Um, so often your stuff is going to be bigger than other people's stuff, and you can use this to get rid of those particular pieces that are really annoying you. Um, and, yeah, just some great spot removal. Fight is a really great ability. Um, obviously, there's some things that it doesn't work with, but a lot of the time, it's going to work really nicely for you. Courser of Crufix just does so much work. One green green for an enchantment creature, so it will be triggering that constellation. 2-4, Centaur. Play with the top card of your library revealed, so you are revealing information. Um, but then you may play the top card of your library if it's a land card. And whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. So it sets up, it basically, you've got an extra card in your hand almost. Um, now you can only play that extra card if it's a land, but it means that you can set up for it, it means that you can get ready for it, and it means that you're gaining extra instant life gain is really nice. Um, particularly if you've got Yara out and you're gaining two life every time, it just adds up really quickly um, and gives you that buffer from people attacking you. Um, and being able to play um, lands more consistently is really lovely as well. What do we have next? Ooh, this one's a spicy one. Priest of the Blood Rite. Three black black for a human cleric. There are two two. And when they enter the battlefield, you put a 5-5 five, five black demon creature token with flying onto the battlefield. So you're paying 5 mana for a 5-5 five, five with flying and a 2-2. Two, two. You're saying, well, what's the catch? Well, the catch is at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose 2 life. Now, if you have Yara count, you're getting 2... 5-5 five, five flying demons from this, which is amazing. Um, now, you are losing two life at the beginning of your upkeep. So one thing you do want to think about is whether you can bounce this soon or whether you have other life gain on the board. That means that that life loss isn't going to be as big of a deal. But that is something to be thinking about 
and going, okay, how can I um, make that not as big of a deal, um, but two 5.5 five flyers can be a big deal pretty quickly. Ether Theorist, one and a blue for a 1-3. One, one enters the battlefield, you get three energy. Just straight up, really nice. Um, obviously with Yarok out, you're getting six energy. And then you can just tap him, pay an energy, and scry one. It's just a really nice little utility ability um, that can set up your draws really nicely, particularly in the early game. This is just a really handy card to have out. Um, setting up those draws, making sure you're getting what you want to get is really, really nice. Now this one, ah, oh, yes. It's a bit janky, but Fists of Iron Wood. <laughs> when did you last see this played in a commander deck? One in a green for an enchantment aura, enchant creature. When it enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one green sapling creature tokens. And if you've got Yarok out, you're getting four 1-1 one, one green sapling creature tokens. Paying two mana for four 1-1s, one, sure. And then enchanted creature has trample. It's as simple as that. You're giving something trample and making two 1-1s one, or four 1-1s, one, which is just really nice. And as you've seen, we can go tall or we can go wide. And that... that allows you to do both of those. Um, one of the other pieces of direct removal in this deck, Putrefy. Nice and simple, one black, green, destroy target artifact or creature, it can't be regenerated. Because you see regenerate in so many decks, right? Right? Um, yep, yeah, just some nice, clean removal, does what it says on the tin. Now this one, this one it was a pull from the recent set as well from Theros Beyond Death. It is a spicy one. Euro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, could be a deck in himself. Easily, you can build a deck around this guy, but I thought he was beautiful in Yark as well. So, he's a bit complicated. One and a green and blue. For a 6-6, six, six, what's happening here? Legendary Elder Giant. Well, when it enters the battlefield, you have to sacrifice it immediately unless it escaped. Okay, okay. Um, obviously, now two sacrifice triggers are going on the stack, but that doesn't matter too much there. But we've got another enter the battlefield ability. So whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, so that's important as well, you gain three life and draw a card. Then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. So if you've got Yarok out, you're gaining six life, you're drawing two cards, and if you've got them, you can play two lands from your hand onto the battlefield. And it does not say tapped, and it doesn't say basic land either. And then you escape it by paying green, green, blue, blue, and exiling five other cards from your graveyard. So you may cast this card from your graveyard for its escape cost, and when you do that, you don't need to sacrifice it. But you get that enters the battlefield ability again. So this is just such good value. For three mana, you are gaining six life, you're drawing two cards, you're potentially putting in extra lands onto the battlefield, and then you're able to do it again, all again later, for just one extra mana and exiling some cards from your graveyard, we're not really getting stuff back from the graveyard most of the time anyway. So this is just an all-star in this deck, getting you so much value and just pounding in for six damage later on and repeating that gain, life gain and card draw. He's just massive. He's just so good. Um, Briarhorn. <laughs> He probably shouldn't be in the deck, but he is. Three in a green for a 3-3 three, three elemental with flash. I will note, he has flash. And he says, when he enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. But you can also evoke him for one in a green. So for one in a green, you can basically cast this as, think of this as an instant, as a combat trick. You're giving target creature plus three, plus three until end of turn. And if you have Yark out, you're instead giving it plus six, plus six, which is really nice. Um, again, I probably shouldn't have this in the deck. I mean, when do you use combat tricks in Commander? But I thought it was fun. It was a nice include. 
and I do like my elementals. Coiling Oracle, such a good one. Green and a blue for a snake, elf, druid, it's a 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it onto the battlefield, otherwise put that card into your hand. So it's card draw or extra lands, either way, awesome. If you do have Yarrick out, you're drawing two cards or getting two lands onto the battlefield or doing one of each, it's great. Definite good stuff. Now here is a potential board wipe, kind of, maybe. <laughs> Cloud Thresher, two green, 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 green. I hope you've got that green ready. It's a 7-7. Seven, seven. It is a 7-7 seven, seven for six mana, but that is a very restrictive casting cost. It's an elemental. It has flash. It has reach. So it's going to help you with those flyers. And when it enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to each creature with flying and each player. Don't suppose you're up against the Locust God, do you? Because <laughs> this would be great against that. So if you if you are up against a deck that has a lot of little flyers, obviously this is going to be wiping those out. And do keep in mind that if you do have Yarrick out, it's not just dealing two damage to each of those flying flyers, it is dealing four damage to each of those flyers and to each player. Now, do keep in mind this is a symmetrical effect. It does affect your flyers, it does affect you as a player, you will be taking four damage. Um, but the other great thing about this card is it does have an evoke cost again. So you can pay two green green, so two green less than you would be paying for the whole creature, and you can just get that enter the battlefield ability of dealing four damage to all those flyers, four damage to every player, um, and then it'll go to the graveyard. Um, but most of the time, having that 7-7 seven, seven out with reach is really nice. And I'm willing to pay that two extra mana for it. But that's just a really nice card to deal with those flyers if necessary. Thicket Elemental. Such a good card. Three green green for a 4-4. Four, four. And if you don't pay the kicker cost, that's all it is. It's a five mana 4-4. Four, four. So every single time, you're paying the kicker cost. Um, unless you're absolutely desperate. It's an elemental. It has a kicker cost of one and a green. So think of this as four green, green, green. Four, a four, four. It sounds like a lot, but when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, you may reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. If you do, put that card onto the battlefield and shuffle all other cards revealed this way into your library. So you're getting a card onto the battlefield, essentially for three mana, I'm going to say, because essentially you think of this as four mana, four, four, and then you're paying the extra green, green, green for that ability. Think of it that way. Um, but then if you've got Yarrick out, you're doing this twice, you're getting two creatures onto the battlefield. My goodness! That is crazy. Um, now, obviously, it's going to depend wildly on what you've got on the top of your deck. If you're able to set that up, awesome. A lot of the time, you're not going to be able to do that necessarily. But just getting two creatures out, activating those into the battlefield abilities, that value is amazing. Okay. Necrotile. Here's another Here's another one that we've got in terms of removal. Two black black for a 2-1 human assassin. He has first strike. And when he enters the battlefield, you destroy target non-artifact, non-black creature. That creature can't be regenerated. So there are some restrictions, but not big restrictions. It's just a creature that isn't an artifact and isn't black. That still leaves you four other colors to be able to to destroy, which is really great. And if you do have Yarrick out, that's two creatures that you are destroying, which is really lovely. Um, so that's some great removal there. Um, Rogue Refiner, just nice. One and a green and a blue for a 3-2. Three 3-2 two. Three two for three. Um, when he enters the battlefield, you draw a card and you get two energy. Just, just nice. Um, and... Yeah, if you've got Yarrick out, you're drawing two cards, you're getting four energy. Just, just decent. Just some decent value right there. 
We're getting close to the end. I only got a few cards left. Um, decoction module. This was one of the other ones from that combo that I was mentioning before. So this is the other one in the sequence. This is one that's a lot better than the other one. So two mana for an artifact. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you get one energy. And then if you've got the other one that says whenever you get an energy, you may put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Obviously, that's chaining up. And if you've got Yara count, you're getting two energy every time a creature is entering the battlefield under control. So you get two plus one, plus one counters because of those separate triggers. And then you can also pay four mana and tap this to return target creature control to its owner's hand. And that's really nice, being able to bounce your own stuff, being able to get those into the battlefield abilities again is lovely. Now I did say I had one cartouche, here it is, cartouche of knowledge. One in a blue for an enchantment or a cartouche, enchant creature you control when it enters the battlefield, draw a card or draw two if you've got Yarok out. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and has flying. It's just nice, a nice little ability. Giving something flying can be super useful for just two mana. It's really nice and being able to draw that card or potentially draw those two cards is lovely. Okay, next up, Cadaver Imp. One black black for a 1-1 one, one flyer. It's an imp. When he enters the battlefield, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. It's lovely. Getting that additional value back from your graveyard is great. Being able to get two things back from your graveyard if you've got Yark out is even better. And having this on a 1-1 one, one flyer is just lovely. Next up, second last card. I managed to have the two denizens next to each other. Shadow Alley, Alley Denizen, one black for a 1-1 one, one creature vampire rogue. Whenever another black creature enters the battlefield under your control, the target creature gains Intimidate until end of turn. Chances are you haven't seen Intimidate for a while. Intimidate means that it can't be blocked except by artifact creatures or creatures that share a color with it. So if you're giving it to a green creature, then it can only be blocked by artifact creatures or green creatures. If it's a black creature, then only by black creatures or artifact creatures. If it's a blue creature, then by blue creatures or artifact creatures. Keep in mind that you don't really want to be giving this to a multicolored creature because then it can be colored blocked by any of the ones of its color. Um, but this is really nice. Every time you play a black creature, being able to give two of your creatures intimidate is quite nice. Um, so that's just a really handy little ability that can help you get the damage through. And then a last one, Ivy Lane Denizen, three and a green for a two, three elf warrior. Whenever another green creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. And again, if you've got Yarok out, putting two plus one, plus one counters on target creature or putting one on one and one on another is really nice. Getting that extra value, those extra plus one plus one counters around is really nice. So that is all the cards in my Yarok deck. As you can see, there's some nice finishes in there. There's some nice plus one plus one counter synergies. There's some nice energy synergies in there. Um, because of the way that Yarok works, um, I've really looked at a, like a lot of the things that you'd usually have in your deck like card draw like getting lands like um, Removal I've put that onto permanence so that we do have that possibility of Doubling up those triggers now obviously you're not always going to have Yarok out and he does cost five mana So that does increase to seven and then to nine etc etc um, which is a bit tricky um, and does get a lot pretty quickly um, but if you are able to get him out and keep him out and protect him then doubling up those triggers is going to be really nice and even if you don't have him out just the value that you're getting from all those abilities is really awesome so I hope you enjoyed this deck tech this deck breakdown and I hope we'll be able to do more of these in the future. There, somewhere. Yeah. Awesome. Bye.